everybody, I want to give you a very, very warm welcome to Sammy Skimp Bob's Almost Haulage episode number six. If you can recall from episode four, you'll remember that Sammy's got to Belfast after he delivered a trailer full of containerized trees from E Acres in Ramsey in the Isle of Man. Now, Steve, uh, big mother truckers, has come up trumped for him again. Um, he's got him a job from where he did his last delivery at Drecker Trans. This time he's delivering a trailer for rice to Euro goodies in Dublin for a payment of 35 euros. It's about a three and a half hour drive away. Uh, 229 kilometers or about 143 miles. So oh, Sammy's got to be coming out of the city on the A12 southbound towards Lisburn. He'll get the M1 Lisburn Bypass. Once he's passed through Lisburn, he will pick up the A1 towards Hillsborough and travel down past Banbridge, uh, down the Newry Bypass. He will then go over the border into the Republic of Ireland. He will pick the N1 up, the Dundalk, pick up the M1 Bypass. He will travel south past Drogheda, that's how you say it, where he will carry on on a southbound direction onto the uh, on the M1 into Dublin. So Sammy's got an older brother Paul. Paul is four years older than Sammy and they never left each other's side. They were as thick as they got up to everything together, did everything together. But it wasn't always that way, because when Sammy was born, and Earl and Paul brought him back from the hospital, Paul was extremely jealous, because Sammy was getting all the attention from parents. It seemed like he'd been pushed away, but he, he just used to play up. Paul wanted to be the centre of attention. He'd do anything, you know, just to get attention from his parents. He'd steal Sammy's dummy. He'd steal his toys and throw them across the room just to get his parents' attention. That's what kids did at that time. Paul tells us that in his toddler years he spent more time in time out than he did playing. But as time went on, Paul grew to love his little brother and in the following years they came very, very close being apart from each other even when Sammy started primary school Paul always looked out for him and likewise at play times and at dinner times Sammy would always make a beeline for his older brother but his older brother was normally playing football with his mates with a tennis ball or whatever ball they could get hold of and Sammy had asked why he couldn't play and Paul would just say because you're too small these are big lads and you'll get hurt. But he was looking out for him that way. But all Paul's mates then grew to, uh, quite attached to Sammy because they was always around each other. So eventually he did get to play football with the older boys. But as with all families that have got brothers, uh, they didn't always get on. There was one occasion, Pamela recalls, that they'd been out shopping and Paul had needed some new football boots because he was in the school team. So they'd been out, they'd been to shoe market and they'd got Paul these football boots and Sammy wanted some football boots as well. But because Sammy didn't go and play in the football team with Paul, they had to turn him down and refuse him. So Sammy, when they'd got home, Pamela was in the kitchen putting the shopping away, so had gone out and there was an almighty crash in the living room. Well, Pam were running and wondering what had gone on. And because Paul had said something to Sammy that was, you know, a bit naughty, Sammy had picked his football boots up and threw it at his head. But Paul, being quick, had ducked and it had gone through the window. Now, Pam were apt to 
how Cyril and Cyril wasn't best pleased and came home and well, Sammy got uh, a smack for it. But for the next six weeks, Paul and Sammy didn't get any spending money until they'd paid for this window. Even though it wasn't Paul's fault, it was Sammy's fault. But they'd always be inseparable at school, at weekends. They'd be down on the backfield playing army with branches what they'd ripped out of the trees or they'd be on the school field playing football in all weathers usually on a Sunday night they'd, they'd have a bath but it was a case of save the bath water whoever was dirtiest got in last they'd have the same haircuts after school holidays it was a case of the final Sunday of the school holidays straight into the kitchen and we were there with the scissors skinheads all over we both got school same haircut and me down clothes sleeping in the same beds because they're in a two bedroom house and they had to top to tail in the bed never apart from each other but all that started to change when Paul went to secondary school because Sammy was still left in primary school and all his mates had gone to secondary school with Paul. He still had a couple of friends, but it wasn't the same for Sammy primary school. He didn't have his big brother having his back and any fights that he got into with any kids, that his brother wasn't there. And Paul made different friends and he used to go hanging about with these friends after school and Sammy just seemed to get pushed to one side again. Well, Sammy didn't know what to do. He used to get into arguments and fisticuffs at home. It started affecting Sammy at school and he started playing truant. And Pamela says that she had numerous phone calls about Sammy not being in school. She'd drop him off, he'd watch him go in, and the first playtime he'd run off and he'd go and play truant. He'd never tell him where he'd gone, he'd never tell him where he'd been. So it got to a stage where that when it was playtime Sammy had to be locked in the classroom so he wouldn't get out again. It then got to a situation where the school had had enough of him playing truant, running off. Uh, he was doing anything he could to get away from the school and that was when they had to send him to a special school where he was picked up. It was a secured unit. The gates were always locked. He couldn't get out of school. He had to sit down in his lessons. But even so, with his new school, he wasn't cooperative with any of the teachers. He'd kick off, he'd throw chairs, he'd throw board rubbers. Eventually it got to a stage where he was excluded from school. They wouldn't let him back in. No other school would take him until he started his secondary school years. And that's when things had changed when he started secondary school because he got back into the second school that Paul was in. Uh, even though Paul was in his final years and he was due to leave school altogether to go into work or wherever he was going to go. But Paul sat Sammy down at secondary school and told him that once he leaves, he can't be doing the same again as what he was doing before. And Sammy seemed to take this to heart because he took the advice of his older brother. And that's when Sammy started knuckling down a bit. He seemed to get on better with the teachers. He seemed to get on better with his schoolwork. And he seemed a lot happier. And Sammy also seemed to notice that as he was growing more mature, he noticed... Uh, around him that the girls were also getting more mature and found he had an interest in girls in fact he had an interest in cars and that all wasn't the be all and end all and that there was other things available to him than his big brother so we're here now you're all goodies uh, we're gonna let Sammy drive in find out where he needs to park this we're going to step out the cab and we're going to let him do his thing
So yeah, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my mate Doug Sharples. He's belting, he's buzzing man. Just hit that button, yeah. Do it for Sammy. Sammy speaks. Sammy speaks. I thought he was an effing mute. God almighty. Well, he's finished his job. He surprised us all right at the end of the video. So, do as he says. Hit that red subscribe button. Until next time. See you later. See y'all.